Hey everyone and welcome to another video. A lot has happened since my last Google ADK video. I got some cherry tomatoes, some capsicum or pepper, and I also got to publish my third book, Mastering Angular Signals. But let's jump directly into what you're here for today. In one of my previous video, I showed you exactly how to deploy an AI agent built with Google Agent Development Kit to Google Cloud on Vertex AI. Today, I'm going to show you the easiest way you can use this deployed agent within your development environment as a chatbot, but also share this with your end users as well in the most easy way possible. And I really want to thank IOMX for this, which is an awesome software consultancy company, if you ask me, for working on this particular open source project with me and having this documented, having an article for this as well. And today I'm going to basically show you the whole demonstration and tutorial on how to use this particular project, which is open source, and you can basically try it today. So so what we are going to do is first we are going to go ahead and clone this particular repository and you can find the link in the description of this video then as always i want you to go to your terminal and basically do a git clone with this link once you do so we are going to quickly go ahead and open this project so let's do cd adk nexus and then i'm gonna open this into nvim you can open this into your favorite editor and then we go to the readme now when you go to the readme you're gonna see that we do have a few steps that we need to work with we do have a python version that we have to follow follow we're going to use streamlit and this is mit licensed so if we go down a bit you can see that we should have python 3.9 or higher and we also should have a deployed agent on vertex ai so far then what we can do is first we can copy the secrets from here and this command needs to be fixed so i'm gonna fix it later on so this should be streamlit slash secrets example tomil so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna quickly go ahead and select this line i'm gonna quickly copy this and let's open another terminal here i'm gonna go and paste this here so what we are doing is we are taking the secrets.example.toml and we are copying it to streamlit secrets.toml. So just within the same folder, just copying this file. If I go back now to the streamlit folder, you can see that now we have this secret toml file and this is what we want to work with. Then we need to go into our file and we need to put the resource ID and the location right here. We can give our chatbot a particular name and then we need to also work with some service accounts as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my browser now and I'm going to go to my Google Cloud project which is this one i'm using this from the ioconnect berlin and then what i need to do is i need to go to my agent engine so i can go to the sidebar i can try to find vertex ai and inside here you will find we have an agent engine which is right here if i go here you can see already my deployed engine which was deployed on 28th of july if i click this here and you might see a different name here so when you click this you're going to be able to see this whole url and in this url after v1 starting from projects this this is your whole project name or you can call it the resource id so copy this one i'm going to go back to my code here and here i'm going to put inside the resource id the same thing so from project to what we have at the end and then we also need the location as well so if i go back here i can get the location from here so this is us central one for me so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to go back here and put this inside location and in here i'm going to name this chatbot social media agent i'm going to quickly go ahead and say social media assistant actually sounds better to me and now i can save this now if i go back to my readme and follow the steps further you can see that the next step is to configure the google cloud authentication for me one of the things that you would want to do when working with google cloud is when you're doing it locally you could either use the google cloud cli and basically authenticate within your terminal on the other hand what you could do is do this basically create some im policy and a service account and then you should be able to use that service account with this particular application to make Make everything work so what we need to do is we need to go to the service accounts we essentially create a service account and then we follow something here so you can read all of this we would end up with a json file which we need to convert to tomil and finally end our credentials right here so that's the whole point so you can read this all i'm just gonna quickly go to my browser and in here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to iam so i can quickly go to iam and admin make sure you are in the right project where your agent engine is and then I'm going to go to service accounts from here and I already have a service account created, but you can go ahead and say create service account. You can give it a name, you can give it an ID, and then you need to give this permissions and principles. So when you do so, you're going to see that we have this particular service account, which has these permissions. And essentially you just need one. And if I click this manage access inside the service account, inside permissions, you can see that the only role it has is Vertex AI user. So what we are doing here is that we are creating a service account 
account for using within our Streamlit application. So we are saying our Streamlit application should be able to access our Vertex AI. And on Vertex AI, we have our ADK agent deployed. So that's what we are doing here. Since we have our agent deployed on agent engine, which is on Vertex AI, we are saying that we have a service account, which is going to use the Vertex AI as a user. And that is what you need here. So once you assign this role, you can click save and then you have a service account ready. Once you do so, you can just go to this list and then press these three dots. Then you can go to manage keys and then you can create a new key here. So you can say add a key, create new key, and then you can use JSON here. Once you do so, it's going to be downloaded for you, as you can see right here. So I can quickly give this a random name. Then what I want you to do is open this in the browser or something, and then you can go to Google and say JSON to Tomil. You can find any tool there, but just copy the JSON content, paste it inside here, and then you get the Tomil from here. Then you copy this guy, and then you go back to your code into the secrets Tomil file and just below this particular line of code you can paste all of it here once you do so just make sure to save it all right so we have done the hard work actually now we can go to the readme again and see the next steps so if i scroll a bit down you can see that we should have a tomil that looks like this so we should have all our credentials there then we basically need to run the app locally so here i need to basically set up my virtual environment source it and then install the dependencies so i'm going to quickly go there i'm going to say python dash m then we can say venv and then dot venv so this is going to generate a virtual environment for this particular project then i can say source dot venv bin activate and then i'm gonna quickly go and say pip install dash r and then requirements dot txt so this is going to install all the dependencies for us we have also sourced our virtual environment as well and then we should be able to start the application from there if you go back to the readme you can see that the next step is basically running this command which is streamlit so i'm gonna quickly copy this and we're going to just let this finish there we go now i can quickly go ahead and run stream relate run app.py now when i go to my browser you're going to see that it's automatically going to pick those things from the environment and now we have a couple of things to see here first of all you can see here the name is mentioned here which is social media assistant now again this is really good for development but you can imagine the same thing going to production and anybody being able to use your agent or your ai agent just like this so so I could go here and say, help me write a post about Essence new book which is this one, by the way, Mastering Angular Signals. And if you are an Angular developer, I think you should really get it. So I'm going to say Essence new book called Mastering Angular Signals. When you click the send button here, you're going to see that it would start working. You'll see your message right here. And then you'll also see a session being created right here as well. Now, all you need to do is just wait and you can see the agent responding with ease. You can see the output coming all together. So here, if I scroll up, you can see this is the first agent. And this is an example from one of my previous videos of the ADK series in which we have created a whole workflow of agents, which is sequential. And in between, there's some parallel thing going on as well. Let me explain what's happening. The first thing that happens is that there is a researcher agent which goes ahead and researches on the topic. So here you can see it says to make the post as engaging as informative as possible. I need a little more information. And then essentially it says what is the book about blah blah blah. And then you can see here it also says in the meantime I'll start with some general research to gather the background information on SN and Angular signals. And this goes and uses the Google's search tool which is built into the Google agent development kit essentially finds the information about myself. So here you can see that it says SNIAS, a Google developers expert in Angular and a seasoned software architect, blah, blah, blah. And you can see all the information here as well. Now you can also see that it found some information on the book as well, which is awesome. And then it goes forward with creating the posts for me. So after the researcher agent, we have two agents that run in parallel. One for generating an Instagram real script and second generating a LinkedIn post. So here you can see that this one goes and and gives us the real script based on the premise or based on the output from the first engine. So here is the whole script that it has created for us. And then it also creates a LinkedIn post as well. Finally, we have another engine that works after these two have worked together and merges the whole output. So here you can see it says, okay, I will merge the LinkedIn post and the Instagram real script into a structured output. Now you can see we have a LinkedIn post right here and we also have an Instagram real script as well. So you can see all of that information 
function here. And this is actually something that I think I'm going to use quite a lot, especially for my LinkedIn posts. But here you can see that how easy it was with this project that me and the folks at IOMX have created for you to start using your agents, which are deployed on Vertex AI and actually start giving to end users as well. And now that you see that we have this agent created, we can actually go to the agent engine. Let's try to navigate that quickly. And if I go to my agent right here and go to sessions, you will see exactly the same session right here, which has been generated just now. And since this is based on users, I can actually open an incognito window and basically try to do the same thing. So I can open the same link here and you're going to see that it's not really going to work because the user is a bit different. So it's not going to be able to get that session, but I can create a new chat. So here I can ask about something else. So here I'm asking it to basically create a post about IOMX and how they contribute to open source. If I just do that, then we are going to have two different windows having two different sessions or set of sessions and each of them can just refresh the page and they can find their sessions again. So here you can see that now we are generating all the script for the Instagram reel and also LinkedIn as well. This is awesome actually. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and close this tab and I'm going to try to reopen it to see what happens. In this case, you can see that since we have the session ID and since we have the user ID locally as well, it is going to fetch the session and I can start a new chat, create more sessions here or what we call threads when we are using chat GPT or other tools like this. You can basically maintain all of them together and you can continue your conversation from where you left off. Great. I'm going to actually close this now and we are going to move to the next step. So if we go to our readme now, you can see that the next step is to actually deploy to Streamlit Cloud where you would basically deploy it to let your team try it out, your end customers try it out. Maybe it's not production ready in terms of actually using it for your customers who are paying you for something, but it still is a good POC for quick feedback or quick access to your AI agent to try things out. I think it's amazing for that. Now, when we talk about Streamlit Cloud, it's really easy to set it up. I don't want to spend time to basically go through all the process. I'm really sure that if you try to do it yourself, it's going to be fine. All you need is your GitHub account. So you log in with your GitHub account. You say, I'm going to create a new application. You connect your repository. You try to configure your application with adding the secrets. Even if you don't provide the secrets and the variables, it's still fine because the application automatically gives you a prompt if you don't have environment set up. I'm going to show you it right away. And finally, you can just say deploy, right? So now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you don't really provide environment variables and still deploy to Streamlit Cloud, for example. And you can see Streamlit Cloud looks something like this. You can quickly go ahead and deploy for free. So public applications are totally free. You can basically use your GitHub account here. Now, if I go to the GitHub repository, you're going to see a link right here. This is IOMX's deployment that you can try the application on. So if I go here, this is what I would see. In here, you can see that as soon as the application opens, it asks me this information and it also shows you how to retrieve that information. For example, how to go to Vertex AI, see the location, the resource ID, etc. So all of that information is here as well. Also on the readme as well. So you can choose where to look from. Finally, you can see that we have some inputs here. So I'm going to provide the inputs and the values right here. The location is automatically set at the moment. I'm going to go to my agent engine and here I'm going to copy the resource ID. Again, it's important that you pick from projects to this ID that you see after reasoning engine. So all of this should be copied. Now I can go here and again, this is the deployed version. So you can see this is production. So I can go with saying resource ID here and now I have to provide my service account JSON. So I'm going to quickly browse this. I'm going to go to downloads, quickly pick the file that we basically generated, which was the service account key. And now I can say submit. This does not submit anything on the server, basically, but it saves it on the local storage. So if I go and do inspect, I go to application now. And if I go to local storage, you can see that on this particular side, we do have this GCP credentials where this whole JSON can be seen. And you can see it right here. So this is stored locally. So even if any developer is trying out this production URL or this URL, that IOMX has given, nothing goes to their server. Everything is stored on local storage. And if you don't believe that, just go and check the code. And you can always go and change credentials to try out maybe another AI agent that you have deployed to Vertex AI and all of the chats would be removed of the previous one. So be careful about that. Now what we can do is try out the agent. Since we have already provided our service account JSON, our resource ID, etc. Now we can just basically talk to the AI agent. So I'm going to ask about something that is fairly new, which is a deep signal being introduced 
produced in angular called nested signal and then we also have something called structural signal so i'm gonna ask to create a post about that so i've written here that help me write a post about something that's coming to angular called deep signal there's an open pull request by alex Ricabo on github which includes nested signal and structured signal include the code examples as well and i'm also giving it the link if you have not subscribed to my newsletter i would highly encourage to go and join the 1900 plus people who are learning about ai angular etc this is the latest release of the newsletter and if i go a bit down here i can see the same thing in the angular section which is right here so i can basically copy the link of the pull request which is this one about deep signal and i can go to adk nexus and paste the link right here so let's see what this generates now we can see that we have sent a message we're just gonna wait now and there we go you can see that we have the results being generated now so if i scroll a bit up let's have a look at what we have here you can see that in the response it has found both nested signal and structured signal you can also see that it references the pull request if i go a bit down you can see that this is the linkedin post that it has generated i'm gonna actually post it and see how well this performs and if i go a bit down here we have the real script so you can see a detailed script for an instagram reel or a youtube short so to say and then finally we have the merged output for both of them so here you can see a linkedin post and here you can see the instagram reel script as well awesome again i can't really explain my excitement because as you can see it really made it super easy to just work with the agents that we have deployed to vertex ai i can just keep this application where i have provided my service account and i can continue my conversations from there with my specialized ai engine instead of using a generic chat gpt or ai studio for that matter unless i have the context there as well but this is specialized for how i've coded my ai agent and i can essentially use this every day well with that said i think there are some things that could be improved with this particular project for example when you send a message we could show a loading instead of just waiting we could also enable streaming the output that would be fun as well but if you're interested in contributing to all of that make sure to go to the github project it is mit licensed and you can basically contribute or raise issues or ask for feature requests as well another thing that you could also do is to start the repository if you find this useful that would really help the project as well with some more visibility and with that said i want to wrap up this video i know some of you have requested things like google agent development kit with mcp tools you have also requested google agent development kit with rag examples as well let me know if there's something specific apart from these topics that you want me to work on next for this particular adk series and i would be happy to accommodate that for you towards the end i want to again remind you if you like this video smash that like button as hard as you can and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so and if you share this video on your social platforms that you found this useful that really helps push the content out there and also helps the channel grow which in turns motivates me to create free videos like this for people like you so you learn for free and you learn in the best way possible per best of my abilities and with that said i'm gonna wrap it up thank you for watching and as always happy coding i'm gonna see you next time